Okay, we will start the process by creating a purchase requisition. So we navigate to the application called Manage Purchase Requisitions Professional. Select this application. Over here we click on Create. And now we will create the purchase requisition for our limit item. If we utilize those new applications, it is only possible to select the document type for normal purchase requisition. So we can't choose here the framework order which you could only utilize using the classical GUI transaction ME51N. Because otherwise, if I select this one here, you can see that now the tab for limit position is vanished. So you must choose Purchase Requisition, and then you can see it appears over here. We could select an automatic source determination, but for now we'll leave it as is. Then let's actually go to the limit item section. So such a limit item is an ordered item that is assigned an upper value rather than a price. So for instance, we can click here on Create, and then we can choose either that we want a limit item for a material or a service. Please be aware that it could also be a service material, of course. For now, we will choose material over here. Because we are procuring a service and we don't know the exact value of this service, we will just say that there is a limit of, let's say, 50,000 in a second. So we will say maintenance, service. The overall limit is now, let's say, 20,000. And then you can see the expected value let's say 15,000 over here. So this means that this value over here, the overall limit, is the one which will be checked once the invoices for the limit position will arrive. So meaning that we do not want to spend more than 20,000 euro in this case. Let's say euro over here. On the other hand, the expected value, this is the value we actually expect to be invoiced. It must not be the same value as the overall limit. When we have a so-called release strategy, so when we have, for instance, a four aisle principle where someone hands in the purchase requisition and purchase order and another person releases this purchase order because of the high value, then the release strategy will always check this value over here. Also, this is the value that is actually considered during commitments from the controlling perspective. Now we need to select the plant. Then we could already provide the service performer, but for now we will leave it as is, as we will create the purchase order out of this purchase requisition in a second. What's missing over here is we need to scroll down a bit, and for the requisition period, we will say that the service will actually start, let's say, on the 1st of May, and will end at the end of the year. Let's scroll down a bit and provide it the purchasing group, and that's it. Now let's hit on apply. We just got some warning messages, but this is fine, so we can click on create. And you can see the purchase acquisition was created. We will copy this number. Now next off we will navigate to ME21N to create our purchase order out of the limit purchase requisition. Please be aware that this won't work if we use the new application called Manage Purchase Orders. Let me quickly show you this one. Because over here when we click on create and scroll down a bit, we won't have an option to copy here the limit items from our purchase requisition. This only works if we would have created a purchase requisition not for a limit item, but for a normal item. There you can see I could select the add from document and then for instance say that the information should stem from the purchase requisition. However, this does not work for limit items as of now. This is why we navigate to ME21N. Click on this one. Now, before we do anything here, we will scroll to the right up until we can see purchase requisition. Then we insert our purchase requisition and hit on enter. Now you can see we must insert some more information. So we will scroll up a bit and here in the header details, we will select our purchasing organization and also we will choose our supplier. Hit on enter again. Now this is fine. Now you can see the system requires us here to insert an account assignment. So we will say cost center for now. Hit on enter. We need to provide a GL account and also a cost center. Hit on enter. And that's fine. Let's now scroll here to the left. As you can see, our item category is E. And because we selected E over here, or to be precise, because E was filled automatically, we have here a tab called Enhanced Limits, where you can see also the expected and overall value copied from our purchase requisition. Now we can click here on Save. And you can see the purchase order was created successfully. We will copy this number. Now let's say the service was actually now provided. So we go to the application Manage Service Entry Sheets Lean Services, select this one. Now click on Create. Here we insert a name, let's say Service Procurement and the reference purchase order, the one we just copied, hit on Enter. And here you can see a common error message. Our purchase order must contain service items for which GR and invoices are expected. So this means that we need to go back to ME22N, click on this one. 
Now make sure your purchase order is selected. You can also search it via other purchase order. We will scroll down a bit and go here to the item details. And over here in the delivery section, we must make sure that the goods received is marked. Also, we must make sure in the invoice that the goods received based invoice verification is marked as well. Hit on save. Now let's try it again. So we go to manage service entry sheets, lean services, click on create again. We provide a name and our reference purchase order. Now you can see it work perfectly fine. We select the purchase order item and click on add. Next off, we scroll down a bit. Here in the service entry sheet items, we will navigate into the item and we need to provide a performance period. Let's now say for the first up until the 30th of May. We need to provide a net order price. So let's say 5,000. We got some more error messages. So let's inspect this one. Enter the order unit of measure. Let's click on this one. And there is a section where we will also solve the other error called enter a quantity greater than zero. Let's say the stated quantity is one and the order unit of measure, let's just say days. That's basically it. Hit on enter. Now the error message is vanished. Let's go to the account assignment. Over here we can see that this was taken over from our purchase order. So we can click on apply and we can now click on create. You can see we now created the service entry sheet for the stated amount of 5,000. However, what we still need to do is we need to send it for approval. So hit on this one. However, this approval will be done automatically by the system because there is normally no workflow in place. So far so good. Now we can of course repeat this procedure here up until the limit is reached. Now let's imagine that our supplier hands in the invoice. So we need to process this invoice via create supplier invoice. Select this one. We will insert the invoice and posting date a reference and our invoicing party. Now before we enter here the gross invoice amount, we will scroll down a bit and here we will select as a reference our service entry sheet for lean services. We will now select our service entry sheet. Of course the balance is not zero, but now we can copy this over here and paste it in our gross invoice amount and now click on check. Now this is fine and we can post the supplier invoice. You can see the supply invoice was created. We can select this invoice. Now all that's left is to pay this invoice. So we navigate to manage automatic payments. Then we click on create parameter, provide an identification, create. Now we provide our company code, the supplier, the next payment date, the payment method, the additional log we will set to on. And that's basically it. We'll now save, click on schedule, proposal, start immediately and schedule. We can see one proposal was created. Let's navigate into this one. And here we can see this is fine. So we can even inspect here the details and we can see that the system found our invoice and even another one, but this is fine for now. So we can go back, back again, select our payment proposal, click on schedule payment, start immediately in schedule, refresh a couple of times and you can see already the payment has been posted successfully. Let's look into this payment, click on payments. And over here you can see the payment document number and we can click on this one, manage journal entries new version to inspect here the document that was posted. Okay, this marks the end of the video. It took a lot of effort. So I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. Also make sure to subscribe to my Patreon where we have a community chat and where I post lots of informative documents about SAP. The link is in the bio of my channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time.